I guess. Yeah. All of you over here, and I think he goes. Yeah. So. All right. So, I'm Jaden Boslett. Um, I'm here with Joseph Delago and Peter Garcia, and we created the Snowden Protocol. So we can see that uh, we found this article on Vice, and it says the internet is your worst enemy if you're an informant. And it says that in the in a span of three years, at least 31 form informants have been murdered because the police were insecurely handling those documents. And if you really think about it, we all have secrets that from time to time we need to disclose to certain parties and we expect, we have certain expectations of them and how they'll handle that information. With the Snowden Protocol, we found a brand new way to leverage game theory economic incentives to have actors actually securely handle that information and also not disclose it. So, here is kind of the high level funds flow. So let's say you want to start a secure conversation. You can do this by proposing an amount, a uh, opening terms, so how many, uh, how much die does each side have to stake for the secret? What are the closing terms? How are the die going to be distributed in case things go wrong or they go well? And the expiration date. When will we um, automatically abide by the closing distribution terms and send the die back? So what happens is if I want to propose, uh, I, I would propose a conversation with those parameters, then the other party would receive the notification saying, hey, Edward Snowden maybe or someone wants to have this conversation with these terms. Will you put up your side of the die and sign your side of the transaction? And once both sides have put die into the bounty, they have now agreed and they can have a secure conversation. So once this conversation is started, each side can commit um, SHA-256 SHA digests of their encrypted messages into the smart contract. And at any time, one, if, if one of the parties suspects that the other one has publicly leaked this information, they can trigger the bounty within the smart contract to be destroyed by also publishing this public information onto the Ethereum blockchain. So if we already know this information is out in the open, We'll go ahead and put it on the Ethereum blockchain again, because we already know it's out in the open, trigger the smart contract, and destroy the bounty. And if things go well, then we'll split the money in accordance to how the agreement um, originally was arranged. And a key portion of this, we have the starting and final um, distribution, because we recognize that secrets are asymmetric. In a use case where I want to tell you a secret and you keep it private, where as opposed to a use case where you have to know a secret to do your job, the incentives are very different in those situations. So to actually understand this a little better, we're gonna walk through an example. So we're actually gonna pull up our application. This is a mobile application we're able to put together. So let's say that um, Edward Snowden wants to disclose a secret to a journalist at The Guardian. He's gonna propose a conversation with a total bounty of four dollars, we use that because we don't have that many um, that many testnet die to use. So we use four dollars for the total amount. I'm sure the secret's probably worth a lot more than that. Um, One dollar is going to be provided by himself. Three dollars by the other party. Meaning that the opening terms are 25 percent from Edward, 75 percent from the other party. He's also going to say that the expiration date is seven days. Don't leak the secret for seven days. And if things go well, the distribution is going to be 50-50. $2 will go back to Edward Snowden and $2 back to the journalist, meaning Edward Snowden made a dollar for giving up that information and the journalist only had to pay $1 instead of $3 for handling that information in the right way. So now Snowden, so Snowden, um, in the case that Snowden miss, and the Guardian mishandles that information, the um, Snowden would um, submit the clear text of that already leaked information to the smart contract and go ahead and destroy the bounty and punish the journalist for their bad actions. So walking through the actual, um, the actual transaction, we saw that Edward Snowden just created, he signed a transaction to create a request. He sent die into the smart contract and now the Guardian would have received the notification saying, hey, Edward Snowden wants to have a private conversation with you. They would, ex let's assume that they went and accepted it. So now we have DAI within the smart contract and we can exchange secure messages back and forth. So let's say that we go ahead and um, Edward Snowden is going to 
send some kind of message. And so every time that you every time that you send a message, we have to actually create an, an Ethereum transaction. We take the SHA-256 digest and we're going to store it within the smart contract. So the smart contract is keeping track of every digest of message that we've had, but we're not actually putting the content of the message out there because this is sensitive information. And let's also assume that the Guardian, they did a message back as well. Well, let's say Edward Snowden then later finds out, he's like, oh man, like you leaked this to the entire world the next day, I need to punish the journalist. So what Edward Snowden is gonna do is he's going to click a report button. And what that report button is gonna do is it's gonna take the clear text and submit the clear text to the Ethereum blockchain, to the smart contract. He doesn't care that it's out in the public because it was already leaked. So he's not going to falsely burn the journalist's bounty for no reason, because he has to put that public information out in the open. And, um, and now, so once, they, once the smart contract is triggered, the journalist has been pu uh, punished for their bad behavior. But things don't always go bad. Sometimes we have things go in a, like in a good situation. Oh, and actually, yeah. So the cool thing is we can actually see these transactions happen on Etherscan. So we can see the, here they are, there's the burn. We can see the actual die being burned. We can see transactions when the, di when the digests were committed into the smart contract. And we can also see when the die were initially funded into the smart contract. So those are the results of the execution of that failure scenario. But sometimes things go pretty well. So let's say maybe Edward Snowden found a vulnerability in SHA-256. Pull up those messages real quick. Bitcoin's gonna go down. So he's like, hey, Peter Todd, I gotta tell you something, but I need you to keep it secret for seven days because I need to sell my Bitcoins. <laughs> so, and so let's say in this, in this scenario, how everything unraveled is Peter Todd, he kept his word, kept it a secret for seven days, and everyone got their, their bounties back. So they both put, like, um, they each put a dollar and three dollars in, and they got a dollar and three dollars back. No harm, no foul, everyone did what they were supposed to do. So this kind of application was never possible before without smart contracts. And with just smart contracts, you could do it, but the security of your secret is only as valuable as the price of Ethereum. If Ethereum crashes, then your secret's not protected anymore. So now with DAI, you can s s have a stable value to storing a secret, and we ran out of time, but we really did intend to hook up the wire API as well, because then that allows, as Helgard would say, the couch potato to use this application using US dollars. They have to know nothing about digital currency whatsoever. And in the future, since this is really just an open source smart contract, this could be hooked up into different um, various messaging protocols, like Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, Telegram, et cetera. Um, and this could be used to prevent things like corporate espionage, protect police informants, secure state secrets, and more. So that's Snowden Protocol. Uh, thank you. Uh, any questions? Woo!